Hello everybody, it's Crazy Logic Skin, and uh, we got a Pioneer 1000 watt. These are not good amps, uh, not really worth repairing. How about if I kick on my power supply and power this thing up? I'm not sending any signal in, but you can hear what appears to be a radio station. So let's shut that off. Coming in. <laughs> on this without actually feeding it a signal. Um, it's using the RCA's, uh, the RCA grounds, and it's picking up AM stations, I think it is. Uh, I had one of these do this before. I figured out how to fix it. Uh, so if I've got another one doing it, and I've got uh, another Pioneer somewhat similar to this that I'm gonna check, uh, that may be its problem. Uh, but it causes distortion when you're playing your music. You, you're picking up that radio station and it's give, giving you crosstalk so <clears throat> I've already pulled the bottom off we're gonna unplug everything here uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull all these wires off make this easier to work on Taking the bottom off, and what we need to do is ground the uh, shield, sort of. Uh, the problem being is, is you have to take every dang screw out of this thing. So, quickly get this done. Probably do a little fast forward. Uh, we'll get all the screws out, and I'll show you. They can fix it with a cap. Labor intensive, but fixable. And if this is a common issue in these, and maybe you've got one as a starter amp or whatever, and you're getting that distortion, and then when you power the amp up, like I said, that was powering it up, but wasn't actually feeding it a signal. Just had the RCAs hooked up. Uh, you're picking up a radio station. And that causes your music to sound distorted when you're playing it, feeding it power because there's there's a whole different signal in there. generous with the thermal paste. Starting to get all over my fingers. So my poor man's insulated screwdriver, just heat shrink tubing. in the corner. Uh, 
amount of labor it takes to get into these things makes them not worth fixing normally. However, this one's basically new. Take the heat sink away. And we got our RCAs over here. And we'll see if I can grab my little zoom camera. So right, let's wipe that off. Sorry it's moving so much. So the RCAs, this is the right and the left uh, inputs, and this, where there's two solder joints, is the ground shield on the outside here. So what we're going to do is we're going to solder from that ground shield to a ground plane, uh, which is hooked to the negative of the, uh, of the amp. So... So, we need to take our multimeter, set it to diode, so it gives us a beep and we want to be on the negative side, and right there, that's a ground, that's all ground plane, but you notice the RCAs are not. So we're going to take this little thing, I'm going to soldering iron sponge wet here always use your sponge and your copper bristles or your brass bristles keep your soldering iron tip super clean uh, make the tip last a whole lot longer uh, so uh, some here uh, so this is a This is a uh, ceramic cap. It's marked 103. Uh, uh, which I believe is 0 0.01 microfarads. Do that or uh, 1 microfarad. And I remember here. Uh, oh, 0 0.01 microfarad. So, turn the soldering iron on. <coughs> so, we're going to bend these legs out just enough to go between that ground and the outer jacket. And we're going to add. That to the circuit board. About like that. Solder out here.
that bit soldered in. And we just want to add it right there. Oh, get that. Thermal compound all over me. Good. Wind up our solder out of the way. Wind up my tip. Turn that off. <laughs> and get the nippers. Nip off the legs. Right, that should take care of it. So let's bring the heat sink back in. Start putting screws back in. Before we put the bottom cover on, we'll give it a test. Sorry, not talking much here. I'm planning on fast forwarding all this. So, if for some reason it doesn't get fast forwarded, but uh,
so what does that capacitor do? That capacitor adds a way to block the frequencies, the high frequent, high radio, or not block, but pass, sorry, the high radio frequencies to ground. That that is, that that, uh, there, now I can put all the screws in without getting thermal paste all over my hands. Uh, because capacitors allow high frequencies to pass. And so... So if you've ever installed tweeters, anything like that, and they've had a little capacitor hooked up to one of the speaker terminals, or if somebody's giving you a bass blocker, all that is is a capacitor. It'll allow high frequencies to pass, but it won't allow low frequencies to pass. And what we're wanting to do is allow those really high frequencies that are the radio stations to pass on that outer shield to the car ground. That, I don't know. I haven't bothered to study this thing's design or nothing. I don't know if that's a common problem in these Pioneers. Maybe it's not as common once it's hooked up the head unit real good. Um, maybe it only happens with cheap stuff. Uh, cheap gear, but uh, I do know that I can tell you that quality amplifiers and stuff with the setup I have never have an issue uh, with picking up a radio station. And I think that this design's just got that issue. Yeah. They're just so cheaply made. I tend to pick those things up and it sounds like the amp's distorted or something's wrong with it. And that's no fun. You don't want an AM station coming in on your rock and roll. Or whatever it is you listen to. So now we're hooked up there. Yep, we're going to be upside down because it's easier for my hookups. All right. Turn on the power supply. Power up the amp. And there should be a radio station coming in. If we hadn't fixed it, but now it's totally quiet. You see the, maybe you can see the glow, but it's, uh, it's no longer, uh, connecting with a radio station. We're going to, uh, set the gain. I found a little screwdriver. There it is. All right. We'll play a little music.
No more radio station coming in. I'll power it up again with no signal going to it. She's fixed. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope this helped you. Bye.